sighing, staring. Lately I have stopped caring. I'm stuck in a rut, waiting for something to come. Int packed DC metro car, covered eyes locked on the camera, is oblivious to the joy around him. The girls playing patty cake, the laughing elderly couple. I don't want to bore you being sappy, but I find it hard to be happy. I'm not out having fun. I'm waiting for something to come. Gerard's dead. Georgetown campus. Street musicians join in covered songs as he walks by. Best case scenario, my job is totally pointless. I spend my life looking up, but there's nothing to see. Worst case scenario is some giant death rock is flying through space to destroy us. Either way, it's not a great outlook for me. Calvert begins to cross the street towards the lecture hall. So I'm getting listless with the sky alive. Something's missing from my life. My heart's going numb, waiting for something to... Calvert falls fails to notice the Vespa speeding towards him, so he gets hit. The driver removes her helmet. It's Kayla, a really hot 20-something girl. Oh my gosh, are you okay? Calvert stands up and realizes he got exactly what he needed. A shake-up and a new prospect. Actually? Yeah. I think I am. Uh, okay. Kayla parks her Vespa by the lecture hall entrance. Calvert, feeling hopeful, breaks into a little dance. Kayla looks back. Calvert freezes mid-move. It's awkward. Kayla gives him a, qu- a quizzical smile before walking in. Something is coming, I maintain. Georgetown Lecture Hall hallway. Calvert pecks, passes a free astronomy lecture with NASA spokesman Rod Hopwood poster, which features Hopwood wearing a leather motorcycle jacket. Behind Hopwood are two women in bikinis. Behind the women, a wall of flames. All of this waiting is not in vain. Georgetown Lecture Hall classroom. I'll keep on waiting until something comes. Or maybe I'm waiting for someone. Maybe I'm waiting for someone. Maybe I'm waiting for someone. Calvert realizes all the lecture hall attendants are staring at him. Sorry. Okay. I heard NASA's delaying the Mars exploration program so Hopwood can compete in the 2014 Olympics. I heard Richard Richard Branson taped Hop tapped Hopwood to head up Virgin Galactic. I heard Hopwood just signed a 4,500 sponsorship deal with Astronaut Ice Cream. Who'd you hear that from? Uh, lecture attendant three springing up from his chair, ripping off his glasses and tossing them to the floor. I heard it from me! Everyone gasps. Lecture attendant three tears off his white dress shirt, revealing a leather motorcycle jacket beneath. It's Rod Hopwood, the guy from the poster. Hopwood pulls out a pack of ice cream, winks, and tosses the pack to lecture attendant too. It hits him in the face. The audience gleefully applaud as Hopwood takes the stage. The lights dim, synthesized music plays, many spotlights cross, the lecture has begun. Hopwood uses PowerPoint slides to to punctuate each of his uh, speeches first. Five words, the attendants ooh and ah. Hopwood, science, exploration, space, spaceships, space people. For many of you, astronomy is a profession. For me, it's a way of life. Sound glamorous? <laughs> Flying in and out of the Earth's orbit at the drop of Uncle Sam's top hat. Navigating through meteor showers. Something at the back of the auditorium catches Hopwood's eye. It's Kayla. She's leaving. Excuse me? Kayla turns around. Page turn. Are you leaving? The mini spotlight moves to Kayla. I I was. Incredibly distracting. Just incredible. I thought this was going to be an astrology lecture. Lecture. I can't talk. <laughs> the attendant slicker. Snicker. Wow, I can't talk. Okay. Close and yet so far. It's an astronomy lecture. Astronomy, you know, the science of celestial bodies, as opposed to astrology, the belief held by brain perverts like you, that the planet's positions control our lives here on earth still confused or did that clear things up the geeks laugh laugh kayla out of the room calvert goes after her it's georgetown lecture hall hallway i'm so sorry about that you didn't do anything i know that's my point i should have said something
I'm not an idiot. Now, I know the difference between astronomy and astrology. I just, I drove by one of those flyers on my scooter and obviously I didn't read it carefully. The guy's an asshole. It wasn't just him. Everybody was laughing at me. Don't take that part that personally. We're bitter around all attractive women because you guys turned us down in high school and college and grad school and currently. That was a compliment, huh? Oh, calling you attractive. Yes, an inadvertent compliment. A, super, a superficial one. It's fine. I'm used to it. I've got a superficial job, which is why I came to the lecture. I could feel my brain rusting and I wanted to learn something that didn't work out so well. What do you do? Do you know that scene in disaster movies where the guy bursts into the Oval Office and goes, Mr. President, there's an asteroid headed directly for the Earth? Of course. Armageddon and Deep Impact are like my two favorite movies. Thank you. And number three is that direct-to-video biopic about John Wayne Gacy. Telvert's not sure how to react to that one. So wait, are you the Mr. President there's an asteroid headed directly for the Earth guy? That's what it says in my card. Calvert hands Kayla a card. Buy nine frozen yogurts and get the tenth free. Calvert realizes his mistake. You got eight. Impressive. When I commit to someone, I really commit. Kayla's puzzled. Something. Commit to something. Like getting a yogurt, realizing that he can do better. Or bigger things like marriage, realizing that he crossed the line. But <laughs> you shouldn't talk about marriage when you first meet someone, even though technically this is our second meeting, so you can just ask me out. I'll say yes. Will you go out with me? We could get frozen yogurt. For free, of course. Well, one of us. It could be you. What's your name? Calvert. But I go by Cal. Actually, that's not true. I go by Calvert, but you can call me Cal if you want. Calvert and Kayla share a moment. Oh, Rajesh, bursting from the building, fiercely pointing at uh, Calvert's chest. Back to our original plan. We're going to the club and getting laid. Uh, I mean, I'm going to the club and getting laid. You're going to the orphanage to help with the orphans with their or orphan stuff, like we planned. Rajesh f fist bumps himself and walks away. I'm Kayla, and I'm going to call you Calvert. Going to... When we go out on our date? Yes. Oh, we're back at the psychic shop. Fortune teller throwing her hands to the sky. No! Blackout. Okay, now we're at the club. Disheveled and defeated. We're just sits alone at the bar. Things didn't go as planned. Oh, okay. This is the second. This is like the reprise of the song. Okay. I bought you a drink, but you gave it away. You laughed in my face and you th said you thought I was gay. No booty topping, no make-out session. Nobody wants to be having a jash. Even my sister Jay and they gave me a snob. From behind the bar and behind the DJ booth, up pops the chorus. Surprise, it's us again. What the fuck? The people from before. Surprise, we're back. Say goodbye and sing to you once more. We hope that you enjoyed part one. We truly do. But if you didn't, you're gonna really hate part two. The chorus girls rip off for Josh's outfit. Under it, he's wearing a sparkly dress at the club. The end of act one. And there is no act two, or any other part, for that matter. He um, only wrote the, uh, they only wrote the music and script for act one. So, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, supernatural creatures, the question their sanity like myself. I hope you enjoyed my little read aloud of the script of Mr. President, There's an Asteroid Headed Directly for the Earth, the musical. Uh, I'm going to have to split this into two parts because my little thing has a stupid recording limit of 10 minutes. So, uh, yeah, definitely this is a part two thing. So, yeah. Au revoir.